Good morning. It's Monday morning, March 6th. It's good to be with you again. My name is Melissa Ebkin, and I'm the pastor of the Iliopolis and Nyanic Christian Churches, the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries, and the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. Thank you for joining me again on this Monday morning. I am so psyched. Today it's going to be 67 degrees here in central Illinois and if the weather app says 67 I'm got I've got a lot of confidence it's going to bump up and maybe even hit 70 so fun day today I want to start by talking about worrying how many of you are chronic worriers I know some of you and I know some of you struggle with just you can't stop worrying it's a common thing and it can really begin affecting your life in a lot of negative ways. It can be debilitating if it's an obsession. Uh, it can affect not only your physical health because how many times do you lay awake at night with stuff going through your mind and you're worrying. It can affect your mental and physical health but it can also affect your spiritual health. It can cause you to lose faith and feel disconnected from the world and from your higher purpose. So let's talk about things you can do to stop worrying. Don't try all of these. Try some of them. And if you want to see it in a list form, hop over to the blog. The comments or the link is in the comments. They're all uh, written down there. So let's just jump in first. And this is my biggest piece of advice. Even if you're not a chronic warrior, sometimes you're going to have those nights where you just can't turn off your brain. The thoughts are cycling through your mind and you just can't get to sleep. You can't make it stop. My biggest difference maker is to have a, what I call stuff I want out of my head journal. It's just a little notebook, nothing fancy. I keep it within an arm's reach of my bed. And whenever I'm having those nights when the stuff is just going through and through and I can't make it stop, I write it down in there and promise myself I will worry about it first thing in the morning. And that helps me to relax and get to sleep. So that would be my first strategy is get a journal nothing fancy. You probably have something in your house already that can serve this purpose. Get a little poo emoji sticker if you want and put on it. Just junk you want out of your head. So that's my first biggie. The second one would be mindfulness. That's always a good thing to do. Stay present in the moment. A lot of times when we worry, we are in a future that hasn't happened yet or hasn't come about and it may or may not uh, come together the way we are uh, fearful of. So practice staying in the moment. Do a quick meditation. That doesn't mean you have to search out a meditation and sit down cross-legged on the floor and spend half an hour. This can be a three minute deal. It can be a 30 second deal. Just take some breaths. Remind yourself to be in the moment. Touch something solid. Bonus if it's part of nature. You can go outside and touch a tree. Touch the ground. Touch something that will get you present. Smell what's in the air. Engage your senses and just be present to what is available in the moment. Uh, challenge the negative thoughts. How true are they? The thoughts that you're um, that are cycling through your mind, that are keeping you up, that are worrying you, how likely are they? Are they actual real? And if you had a friend worrying about these things, what would you say to them? And so take those thoughts and challenge them. What is the validity in those thoughts? Are you having a disproportionate response to what might actually happen. Uh, next, take action, even if it's a small step. Sometimes sitting down and writing out a plan of whatever is worrying you. Just write down some steps you'll need to take, uh, what you're going to do about it. Sometimes that in itself 
is enough to ease your mind and help to bring you back to the present moment. Uh, next, uh, have you been neglecting your needs? Sometimes if we're not tending to the emotions that we have, uh, if we're not tending to our basic needs of healthy eating, uh, movement, getting enough sleep, it's worth sitting down and thinking for a minute if maybe that's the source of the disruption in our lives and re recommit to those areas. Uh, if it's really bad, seek support. Find someone, a professional that, that can help you out. Maybe you need a therapist, maybe you need a coach, whatever it is, a pastor, uh, a friend. Find someone that will support you in this. And then, and these are my biggies. I saved these for last uh, because I might get to talking about them a little bit. Cultivate spiritual practices. The thing about worry is it can disconnect us from our faith. It can disconnect us from our higher power, from God, from spirit, however you name and identify that source. So cultivate your spiritual practices and be committed to them. When you do that, you'll have a greater sense of inner peace and you will have a greater sense of resilience and you'll be able to handle the things that come up. Uh, trust in the higher power. Sometimes there are things that we can't control and leaning into to our beliefs and trust in a higher power can, uh, can help us to make sense of the moment, to stay connected in the moment, and to remind us that we are a part of something that is much bigger than ourselves. A lot of times I will encourage people if they're really bogged down by worry or stress, go spend an afternoon volunteering somewhere. Get out of your head, get out of your experience, and go help someone else. That perspective shift can really help us out a lot. So trusting in our higher power will help us to do that. And then finally, let go of control. There are things in life that we can control. We can always control how we respond, how we feel, and the actions we take. But sometimes things are going to happen that we cannot prevent, then that we cannot control. In those moments, it's important to understand what you can control and what you cannot control. And then lean into that connection with the higher power and trust that there will be a greater outcome for you on the other side of this. Worry has a specific and significant hindrance to our spiritual health, also our physical and mental health. But it can cause us to lose faith. It can cause us to feel disconnected from our life, from our purpose, from our faith, from, from everything. But when we incorporate spiritual strategies and mindfulness and gratitude, gratitude's another one, make sure that you count your blessings. That'll focus you on what is real and present and not on what may be missing. But start that worry journal. Take care of yourself. Cultivate and commit to those spiritual practices. Trust in a higher power. Let go of control when it's beyond your control. These things will help you to have more inner peace. It will help to break those chains that have you bound to worry. Uh, don't try them all at once. Pick a couple, pick one, pick two or three, and try those strategies. See what works for you, see what's helpful. And if you want some, some help in all this, or just encouragement, sometimes we all just need a little bit of encouragement. Make sure you reach out. I would love to be an encourager for you. And if you have any questions, uh, let me know. I'd love to hear your comments. I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts on this. And let me know if you're a chronic warrior. That's all for this week. I will see you here again next Monday. Be well, friends.